um, is, uh, let's say you wanted to build a field service agent that you want to interface into Copilot. Uh, all you've got to do is give it a system prompt, tell it that, hey, I want you to be a field service agent, point it to a SharePoint site where there's a bunch of documents related to field service, uh, add to it even additional data sources, in this case, their dynamics uh, as the system of record for field service, and you have an output, which is essentially a field service agent, which now you can talk to uh, and have a conversation with, just like you would with any other regular co-pilot co conversation, right? So that simplicity, it's kind of like back in the day, we just created an Excel spreadsheet, all right? It's no more mystical than that. Uh, just like how you could create an Excel spreadsheet that was a forecast, you can now create AI agents using a low-code, no-code tool like Copilot Studio, put it into Copilot, uh, you can even think of these as the new form of applications uh, and that any one of us can create. Así que esa fue la presentación de Sachin Nadella en el tour de IA de en Londres, mostrando lo fácil que es ahora crear agentes de IA. Creo que la mayoría no comprende toda la infraestructura de IA de la que habla Nadella. Él menciona Copilot y cómo todo esto se integrará con la IA. Creo que esta charla es una de las mejores en las que se muestra cómo será el futuro del trabajo. Sabemos que Microsoft está presente en muchos ordenadores, incluso si no tienes un Mac. Y esta información será fundamental porque en gran medida es así como se verá el futuro del trabajo en nuestros ordenadores personales. Voy a desglosar esta ponencia para ofrecerte los detalles, pero esta es una de las presentaciones más reveladoras que no ha recibido el reconocimiento suficiente. En primer lugar, Satya Nadella habla sobre cómo estos agentes tendrán capacidad de razonamiento y planificación. Algunos incluso tendrán memoria y cómo esto integra la experiencia de los agentes, no solo para el trabajo, sino para una variedad de experiencias que tendremos en el futuro. Uh, to make sense of it. And then lastly, you can feed it more context, more memory. Uh, so you put all these three things together, you're building out a very rich AI or agentic world uh, in which you are going to have these AIs or agents, right? There will be some AIs and agents that are personal agents. Uh, there will be things that will work in the context of a team, in the context of an organization or business process or even cross organizations. So this rich tapestry uh, of AI agents that augment uh, everything else that we built, right? So that's the other part. The di entire digital infrastructure and tools that we today have get augmented in this agentic world uh, with all these AI agents that we build using the scaling laws as the underlying force. Aquí es donde vemos a Satya Nadella hablando sobre cómo esta será la interfaz de usuario para la IA. Cómo Copilot será básicamente la interfaz a través del cual la IA interactuará e integrará con tu ordenador. Creo que es la mejor manera de explicarlo, ya que permite que las personas comprendan cómo será el futuro de una IA agente cuando logre fusionarse con tu ordenador y otras aplicaciones esenciales. Copilot es el UI para la IA, es la manera más simple que pienso de eso. Uh, we then have uh, the Copilot and AI stack, so to be able to, for you to build your own AIs and AI agents uh, and Copilots, we have a full uh, stack. And then lastly, this new set of devices, which are these Copilot devices. Um, and so I want to talk about each of these platforms starting with Copilot. Now, as I said, if you start with this idea that this rich agentic world ultimately does need to meet us, and we need to meet it, that means you need a UI interface, right? Just like the PC or the phone was the user interface or the apps on a phone or a PC were the interface uh, to essentially digital technology, uh, these co-pilots and co-pilot is the UI for all of this AI, right? Even in a world where there are a lot of agents that are working autonomously, uh, they do need to raise exceptions, get permissions uh, from us, and the question is how does that happen? It happens through this new organizing layer for how, in particular, work gets done. Uh, in fact, work, work artifact, and workflow is going to change. Uh, a great example of this is just a couple, a month ago, we launched something called Pages. Just like, say, back in the day in the 90s, we launched Excel or, you know, Word, uh, which were, you know, basically editors to create new artifacts. Pages is the first I would say user experience to create new AI first artifacts, right? I can search the web or my work for retrieving information, um, and then I can put it into pages, and it's a document for, it's a document that I can then share across the organization, and I can work with AI 
and humans. In fact, I sort of say the metaphor I use is, I think with AI and work with my colleagues at work, right? That's the new workflow. What was the previous workflow? I thought on my own. I created artifacts and I shared it across the organization and collaborated, but now I not only have a cognitive amplifier effectively with AI, uh, where I do my work, and then I create artifacts and I collaborate with my colleagues in order to get things done. And so that's really the beginning of this co-pilot era, uh, where it's just not about a chat interface, but it shows how chat is just one modality of being able to retrieve information, but it does lead to more sophisticated workflows and collaboration. Now, you extend. So the other thing is that this is not just about any particular artifact editor or workflow we created, but you can extend Copilot with any agent you build. In fact, Copilot Studio is a low-code, no-code way for you to be able to build agents. Um, and, and these agents are really grounded in a rich set of data sources, starting with, in fact, the most important database in most organizations is the database that contains all your office information, right? Who works for whom? Who, who are my colleagues on this project? What documents are there uh, related to a particular team or a project? Uh, what is the relationships between all of these documents and people and projects? All of that and all the emails you've had, teams conversations you've had, that's all in fact in a first class database called the graph or the substrate that is now exposed through a graph uh, in M365. You Además, para aquellos que piensen que construir agentes de IA podría ser complicado en el futuro, Satya Nadella nos muestra exactamente lo rápido que se pasará de un prototipo a un agente funcional que podrás utilizar en tu entorno de trabajo, uno que de verdad funcione de forma efectiva y pueda realizar tareas en tu nombre. Uh, in fact, a great simple uh, example of this um, is, uh, let's say you wanted to build a field service agent that you want to interface into Copilot. Uh, all you got to do is give it a system prompt Tell it that, hey, I want you to be a field service agent. Point it to a SharePoint site where there's a bunch of documents related to field service. Uh, add to it even additional data sources. In this case, their dynamics uh, as the system of record for field service. And you have an output, which is essentially a field service agent, which now you can talk to uh, and have a conversation with, just like you would with any other regular co-pilot co conversation, right? So that simplicity, it's kind of like back in the day, we just created an Excel spreadsheet. All right, it's no more mystical than that. Uh, just like how you could create an Excel spreadsheet that was a forecast, you can now create AI agents using a low-code, no-code tool like Copilot Studio, put it into Copilot, Uh, you can even think of these as the new form of applications. Uh, and that anyone... Aquí es donde vemos la demostración de OpenAI de la gente que mencioné en un vídeo anterior, pero esta vez con mucho más detalle ya que es una demo práctica y un ejemplo funcional real. Voy a dejaros el tiempo completo de 6 minutos para que podáis verlo, pero creo que probablemente sea uno de los contenidos más importantes que verás, ya que muestra cómo el futuro está cambiando justo frente a nosotros. No te pierdas este tipo de contenido porque creo que el futuro va a llegar más rápido de lo que imaginas. Y no prestar atención a cómo está cambiando el mundo es un grave error. De todos modos, estos son, por supuesto, los agentes copilot de Microsoft. Let's take a look. It all starts with an incoming email from a prospective client, much like you see on the screen right here. Now, previously, they had had people on the back end essentially receiving these emails, parsing through them, and figuring out what to do next. Who should it be routed to? What expertise did they have in the firm? But this is where the autonomous agent comes in. Now, an email comes in, and the agent springs into action. What you see here is that it will begin to parse out the email, moving through the ambiguity of human language to, for instance, find out what the engagement's about, to check the engagement history, to also map it to their industry standard terms. And then finally, to try and find the right person to take the next step within the firm. With all of this information in hand, the agent then goes about writing an email that takes all of this information and summarizes it for the receiving partner. And what you see on the screen is exactly that. In comes a whole bunch of human written email. The agent processes it, summarizes it, and sends it to the right partner in the firm to take that very next step. Now, it's worth pausing for just a moment here to reflect on what you're seeing. It happens so fast, you, you might miss it. 
But essentially, this agent has been given a loose set of instructions, kind of like you would to a human, and it deals with all of the messiness of human communication, figuring out what the right next touch point is for the customer. Now, this is magic, but it's only half of the magic, because now we're going to go behind the scenes to see how easy it is to actually create an agent just like this. For this, we will move over into Copilot Studio. Here you see that we have programmed up with McKinsey the agent, but not using a sophisticated programming language, instead using natural language, the same way that you would tell a colleague to get ready to do this task. You also see that what makes this agent autonomous is that we can set what's called a trigger. In this case, the trigger is set to watch an email address and to react immediately when an email comes in. But in fact, you can set it to look for events across a whole wide range of systems sitting there working for you 24-7, waiting for an event to come that gets it going. You also, just like a regular human colleague, add knowledge. Here we see a Word document, a SharePoint site, and a database about engagements. But of course, you can add additional knowledge sources. That includes line of business systems like SAP or ServiceNow or even databases. And finally, to finish up what you give this agent to do its work, you give it a set of actions. And we saw those in the flow. These are actions that include things like pulling out the relevant information or summarizing what a human has written. All of this together makes the agent powerful because it can deal, again, with all of that ambiguity that a human throws at it. Now, what we saw was one email coming in about one new client engagement. But the exciting thing here is that this scales. How does it scale? Well, to see that, we'll go over to the activity pane where we can look at the long list of engagements that it's working on. Zooming in up top, for instance, we can see that it's worked on over 1,300 engagements and there are 33 in progress. If we want more details, we can go into the analytics tab. What this means is that this agent is always working on behalf of the firm and that's very exciting for us. Now, from here, we also see that Although the agent's amazing, it does sometimes need some human help. So we're gonna jump into a case, the second from the top here, where we will see that it gets a little bit stuck. As you look, it's gone through those steps that we saw previously, but it's stuck here at that one where it's looking for the partner. And if we zoom in, we can see why. Here, for instance, we see that it's picked the right partner, but that partner has now left the firm. It has an instruction that says, if that's true, it needs to escalate to a human manager to give it someone else to go to. Now to see what that looks like, we're gonna switch over to Copilot and see that interface with that human manager. Here at the bottom right, you will see that a notification pops up in Copilot. Then the manager gets all the information he or she needs and can provide the right person to route the email to. Back at the ranch, going back to our agent, we can see that it takes that information and fills out what it needs to do. Now, we're excited about this because of the business value it can drive. McKinsey in its trials has shown that it can reduce lead time by 90%, reducing administrative overhead by 30%. And as you look at this list, what we envision is an orchestration layer, just a bunch of agents that can be out there helping individuals, teams, and entire functions to streamline and automate their processes, no matter what industry they're in. They're so easy to make, anyone can do it. You design and set these copilots out to work in Copilot Studio. You interact. Espero que te haya gustado el video. Recuerda suscribirte a mi nuevo canal, Economía Post IA, para no perderte ninguno de mis recopilatorios de noticias diario. Link en el comentario fijado. Estoy preparando muchas cosas para el canal, así que estad atentos. Saludos. Y Level Labs es una herramienta de IA generativa de voz que ofrece una de las tecnologías de texto a voz, voz a voz y también clonación de voz más avanzadas del mercado. ¿Quieres crear voz de narradores realistas para tu contenido o necesitas un lector de texto fácil de usar? Y Level Labs tiene la solución.